literally thousands of institutions across the world that offer a chance to get a degree in business or business related field. So if you are looking for a degree in business and specifically an undergraduate degree in business, that's what this video is going to focus on. I'm gonna offer nine important things that you should be looking for, nine tips as you look for your search. So I'm Matt Rosu. And I'm Dean of the Sigmund Weiss School of Business at Susquehanna University, which is in central Pennsylvania. Uh, first question I think you should be asking if you're watching this is, why should you trust me on this? So a little bit about me. As I mentioned, uh, I've been Dean of a business school for, I'm in my sixth year as Dean of a business school. I'm chair of the AACSB, which is the top business school accreditation body. I'm chair of their small schools network this year. Uh, I have served on peer review teams reviewing other business schools, and I've talked to hundreds or even thousands of students or prospective students, as well as uh, hundreds of other uh, business school administrators, of people, of deans or associate deans or program directors or undergraduate program directors at universities across the world. I have a really good sense of what helps make business schools valuable for students who are there. And tip number one relates to the, uh, the organization I said I'm chair of the Small Schools Network for this year. Uh, look for whether or not the school is accredited. And specifically, um, if you're in the United States, is the, does the school have AACSB accreditation? So AACSB, that's the association to advance collegiate schools of business, and it's really the premier accrediting body for business schools. Now, I know um, if you're watching this and you're, you know, you're considering college, or if you're a parent watching this, accreditation is not the most exciting thing to think about. Um, I'm fully aware of that, but it's really important. Uh, AACSB, there's a number of things they'll talk about. They, they, they focus on continuous improvement. But what I like to tell people who come through um, the value of AACSB is they help to ensure that the faculty in an institution have the qualifications that they should have so that when you take classes with them, you know you're getting the, the right content. You're, you're having somebody who has the professional currency whether it's research or whether it's professional experience, to help you learn what you really need to learn um, for part two, getting a job. Uh, AACSB really looks to see um, is the curriculum designed as such that students are continuously learning and able to get jobs when they graduate. So AACSB accreditation, I think, is step one to look for. I don't know that it should automatically rule out a school that doesn't have it, but you should look, think more closely about one that doesn't have it, certainly, at least in the United States. It's becoming more um, popular for premier schools worldwide to go after AACSB accreditation as well. But in the U.S., right, this is the, the top accrediting body. There are about 900 uh, or so, just under 900 uh, business schools in the world with AACSB accreditation. That's of the, say, 16,000 or so degree programs that offer some sort of a degree in business. So it's, it's a little bit more than 5% of business schools worldwide um, have AACSB accreditation. So it is really something to look for. Second thing you should be looking for in a business school, second tip, is what majors does the school offer? This is important for a couple reasons. Uh, first, do you know what you want to major in? Well, make sure the school has it. If, if you would like to get your CPA, okay, you, you probably want to make sure that they have an accounting program. Or if you'd like to be a finance professional, okay, what do, what do they have for a finance degree? Uh, same with management, same with, um, you know, like, anything you could think about, real estate, uh, supply chain management, marketing. And it's important to look at this uh, because different schools are going to have different areas that they focus on. Uh, I'm, I'm dean of a small school. Right? We, we can't have all the majors. And we have some students who come through and they're interested in things and uh, you know, we're not going to be right for them uh, because smaller schools sometimes have to make choices on you know exactly which programs to offer. Uh, bigger schools may have 
may have a wider selection. Um, something, something to think about. We're going to talk about the big versus small school uh, decision a little bit later. But said one thing, do they have the major you want to offer? The second reason you want to look at the majors, there are certain majors that most business schools probably should just have because having that major means you're going to get a well-rounded education. Most should probably have uh, you know, a general business or a management major, an accounting major, finance program. Uh, economics is great to have uh, within the business school or outside of the business school. The, you should look to see that they have kind of some of these general programs as well to make sure you're getting a well-rounded education. And a third reason to think about the majors is if you're not quite sure what you'd like to do or if you want the flexibility because you think, you know, let's say you think that a business economics degree is for you. And that was, that was my training. I got a business economics degree. Thrilled with my choice. If you come in thinking business economics... Um, but you're not 100%, you might want the flexibility to switch to, say, finance or management or accounting or, uh, you know, business data science type major. So all of these are um, reasons why the looking at the majors the school offers is really important. Step number three, or tip number three, when you are looking uh, for a undergraduate business program. What is the placement rate for the institution and where are the students going? And this tip number three is really key and it hits on a lot of the quality questions we're going to be talking down the road, right? If an institution has a really good placement rate, so let's say, um, you know, 90, 95 plus percent is usually known as pretty good. If it's 95% or higher most years, okay, they're doing a lot of things right, although do look to see where the students are going. Uh, are the students getting jobs at basically some of the premier places in the world? If you're finding a, a business school and they are having a very high placement rate and their students are going to some of the top places in the world, well, clearly they're doing something right. Um, if it's quite low, Okay, it's not 100% evidence of this, but there are probably some, there are some gaps here. Uh, you'll be much better off if you're going to a school with a 98% placement rate than an 85% placement rate, right? In one case, it's one out of 50 students won't have a job or uh, be in graduate school six months out. And these are official statistics. You can find them on the websites of the institutions you're looking for. Uh, one out of 50 versus, say, one out of seven, it's a huge, huge difference. So higher placement rate, good. Um, also, where exactly are the students going? Get, get a sense of where the students are going for, a, uh, for their jobs. Be really careful here when schools give you information on where their graduates go. If you're talking about a school that graduates 1,000 students a year, Okay, them talking about 20 students doesn't do much for you, right? That's 2% of the class. Um, even if they're talking about, say, 50 of their students, that's 5% of their class if, it, if they're graduating 1,000 per year. If instead you're talking about a school um, that graduates 150 a year and they're talking about 50, well, all of a sudden, okay, that's a third of their class. That's a, probably a pretty good representation of where graduates are going. Uh, we're at a smaller school, we will post, um, you know, little celebratory kind of cards and we'll put a photo up as I'm speaking of the placements that our graduates have so that when prospective students and their parents come through, they get a pretty good sense of, okay, this is, this is where students from the Sigmund Y School of Business end up going for work. This is where they end up getting employed. Um, and for us, we're, we're pretty excited, right? We, we, we have about 100 and maybe 140 to 150 graduate in any given year. We're putting up a pretty representative sample of some of really the top, top firms in the world. But that is something really important that you'll want to look for. Where are graduates going um, and how many are getting jobs? 
There's a lot of really good data on this. And poke around, prod. If, uh, if you're going to a bigger school especially, really dig deep. Um, don't just settle for, okay, well, that's the top 2% of your graduates. Where does, the, where does the median graduate end up going? Really important to figure that out. So figuring out where a business school places students when they graduate is crucial, right? I mean, it's really important. What percentage of students are graduating is also important, right? Where the students go when they graduate doesn't matter much if the, if the institution isn't graduating a high percentage of the students who come in. So graduation rates, or and related to that, you could, you could ask about first year retention rates when you go into a school. And um, how many of the students graduate in four years? The official government statistics on graduation rates are usually for six years. What is the percentage of students who graduate in six years? Well, many people, when you go into, when going into college or university, are hoping to be done in four years. And there are a number of schools that the students who graduate, 98% of them will be done in four years. There are others that, you know, of the graduates, fewer than half are done in four years. That is important. That's going, that's a lot of money. An extra semester, an extra year at school is significant amounts of money that you'd not only have to spend, but also it's time you're not working. So think about the graduation rates. Here, the rates can be across the board. Anything over 70 for an institution is well above average. Uh, first year retention rates, right? Is it above 80, 85, 90%? Those are generally pretty good depending uh, what you're looking for. But the, the data on graduation rates, that is publicly available. You should be able to find that actually by a simply Googling the institution that you're looking for can show what the graduation rates are for a particular institution. So that's really information to, uh, really easy information to find and important information as when you go to a place, you wanna, you wanna make sure there's a high probability that you will indeed get your degree and that you'll get it within four years. So the graduation rate for six years is publicly available. The four year is a little bit tougher to find out. So if, uh, you know, that's something to ask about. If you're going to a campus visit, ask them what percentage of the students graduate in four years. And if somebody doesn't know, keep asking because that could, it's, it could be incredibly costly if you're not able to, say, get into the classes to be done in four years and it takes you four and a half. That is a huge expense for you. Tip number five for you to think about um, for, you, for those considering an undergraduate business school, what high impact practices does that business school offer? So high impact practices. Uh, could be studying abroad. It could be internships. It could be uh, a school has a co-op program. What type of capstone work is done with professors? Th what kind of um, what kind of mentoring is available for students and advising is available for students? What are the high impact practices? The things that when you graduate, these are really things that stand out. If you study in a, in a foreign country, whether it's for a shorter period of time or a longer period of time, that's a high impact activity that you're engaging in. Uh, you will learn a lot, you will grow a lot, and it really looks incredible on your resume when you're applying for jobs. Internships are absolutely amazing in terms of what you will learn while you're working in an internship and, once again, can help you actually, if you do an internship while you're a student, it really can help you land the, the job you're going for once you graduate. Capstone work, do you get to do research projects closely with your professors where you're working on important topics? Do you get to, does the firm involve a lot of experiential learning with local companies? or local nonprofit organizations where you're working directly, essentially with real world clients. Business schools, every business school should be able to brag about a number of high impact practices. Uh, for us, 
right? Um, what I, what we will brag about a lot within our business schools, every student has to study away from campus 100%. And we are the only um, business school that I know of in the world that guarantees, we literally have a written guarantee that students can do an internship in a foreign country. Like I say guarantee, right? We have terms and conditions. <laughs> guarantee is a big word. And you know, lawyers were involved writing out terms and conditions. Those are really high impact practices. And you better believe that we talk about this when anybody comes by. Uh, whatever business school you go to should be thinking about, you should be asking, like, what are, what are some of the high impact activities that you promote that every student gets or many students get when they go through? Sixth thing that uh, the sixth consideration you should give when thinking about what business school to choose at the undergraduate level is, are you in the business school right away? Some business schools, when you join the university, you can be part of the business school right away. Other business schools, you, you cannot. You, you could be part of the university, but then you later have to apply to be part of the business school. Uh, it's a surprisingly large number of institutions that go with the latter. Uh, there is so a little bit of danger in the latter one. If you go to an institution and you cannot be in the business school right away, it's not guaranteed you get in. I know there are some schools where the entry requirements can be pretty tough to get into the business school. And so a number of students, even pretty good students, will end up going to a school wanting to study business and they can't actually then get into the business school. Uh, that's a consideration that you should really think about. Are you a business student right away? Seventh thing to think about when considering a business school, what are the class sizes and what type of professor interaction will you see at this particular school? Now, what's desired here could differ across students. I'm at a smaller school, and I'm convinced that it's, it's the better approach. There are people who are at bigger schools who, who prefer that. If you want to get to know your professors, right, smaller class sizes are pretty crucial. It's, it's much tougher to get to know your professors. If you're in classes of 80 or 100 or 200 or 500 students, it's just, it's much more difficult for that professor to start to know too many of their students. If the class sizes are 10 or 15 or 25 or 30, all of a sudden then the professors will start to know every single student in the class. You can't be anonymous at a place like that, which for some students that's terrifying. And, and if that's the case, then maybe the small school isn't for you. Um, but the benefits of that, in my opinion, uh, are professors knowing you, professors taking a little bit more of a personal interest in your development. Also, there may be a time when you would like a letter of recommendation or a reference from a professor. It is a whole world easier when you're at a place where, the prof where you have all sorts of professors who know you because you know, you were in a small class and they were engaging with you throughout an entire semester or maybe even in multiple semesters if you had a particular professor multiple times. Uh, that said, uh, while I have the preference, what I think is better, there, there are some who would prefer a larger class size. So what type of class sizes are you looking for and what type of professor interaction are you looking for? Uh, that is something that will differ across institutions. Eighth thing that you should be thinking about, that you should be looking for when considering a business school is the alumni interaction. How involved is the alumni network at your school? This one might take a little bit of investigation when probing the particular schools because very few business schools, if you go to visit an institution, no tour guide is going to say our alumni network's not that strong. Nobody's going to say that, right? Um, what you need to be looking for are what are events where alumni are intentionally put in front of students. Are there networking trips that you know you'll have the opportunity to go to? Are there days on campus where alumni come back? Um, 
at Susquehanna, we have one called Breakthrough, where 100 alums will come back for a Friday and a Saturday in February solely to help students. And they'll be putting on topics that can help students, but it's also a great chance to network with students. Um, what type of mentoring programs are there? What opportunities are there for students to be mentored by alumni, not just their professors? Is there any formal system in place? That's incredible if there is. If not, is there an informal system? How common is it? These are questions to ask when you go into a business school, but the alumni network can be valuable. Um, speaking of this from my experience as a dean, many of our students get jobs because we have a really strong alumni network. And if, it, it, if our alumni network was not this strong, um, those initial, it would be much more difficult for our students to get jobs. Now, they would, I mean, our students are, our graduates are incredible, but it's a whole world easier when you get a lead from an alum on a particular opportunity. Uh, it's a lot easier when you have an alumnus uh, or alumna who reaches out and says, I would really love to figure out a way to get a, a student at, from your university to intern for me. I mean, that's amazing, right? That's, that's just gold when that happens. And strong schools will have that happen a lot. So dig in a little bit because no school's going to have a banner saying we have a bad alumni network. That's going to require a little bit of investigation on your part and a little bit of comparison across institutions. The final, the ninth and final thing that I will mention here uh, when looking for an undergraduate business program. What can that school brag about? Or a better question, if you go to this school, how are you going to brag about the school? And, and this might be a funny way to think about it, is how are you going to brag about the school? But realize, once you go to a school, you made the choice to attend that institution. That's part of, it's kind of part of who you are. There are times where employers might ask you, why did you go to this particular school? And if you don't have a good answer for that, are they going to think that you can defend why you would work for this firm, why this firm was great. No, you should be excited about this school. You should have things you can brag about. And if you can't, pick a different school. Different business schools have different areas of focus. Um, and, and in many ways, that's really a wonderful thing. There are some business schools that have an incredible focus on the regional economy. And that's just, that's what, that's who they are. And it's what they do. And they do a great job of it. And if you're want to be in that particular area, that could be an incredible spot for you. There are some business schools that have great um, co-op programs where you're in school for a semester and then you're working for a semester and then you're back in school for a semester. Um, there, are, there are some institutions, like especially the really, really selective institutions where you know, like if everybody's getting above a 1500 SAT score, right, you're going to class with a whole bunch of geniuses, right? And the whole time you're immersed with around a whole bunch of geniuses. Um, what is it that you're going to want to brag about the school? Um, a lot of it could be about the business school, and certainly some of it should be about the business school. But this is one that it could also be about the institution. You know, if, if uh, for the pitch. I actually work with my students and I talk to them about what is your pitch for why you chose this school. And it's important, tell them it's very important for them to know their pitch. Uh, it could be specifically about the business school, you know, that's guaranteed an opportunity to do an internship in a foreign country. The we have, a, we have a professional mentoring program for sophomores. We have a capstone, uh, pretty amazing capstone experiences. We, we, you know, I, will, I spoke about alumni networks. I'll brag about that. There's a whole bunch of different ways about the business school. Uh, but we also, you know, with, with our particular business school, we are uh, proud of our connection to the liberal arts and the combination of a liberal arts education with a business education. And that's what our students, if coming here, would be bragging about. Or some might be saying, well, it was a really top business school and a good accreditation and I got um, a good education there, but I also got to play my the sport I wanted to play. And I loved the feel of the campus. Uh, you know, that's a good setting. 
whatever it is, you should be able to brag. Um, and you know, it can have a negative connotation, but be be excited about where you where where you chose to go, because um, if you are excited and can talk about the opportunities, you never know when you're going to be at uh, in an elevator and somebody overhears you and thinks, oh wow, that's exciting, and maybe has some opportunity for you. So it's important that you're able to articulate this, whether it's in an informal setting. Sometimes it could be in an interview. Uh, you, and if somebody asks, if, if you get an interview, they clearly liked you, right? You got in the door. So they liked what they see on paper. Be, be excited about where you went. It was clearly good enough to get you in the door. Talk about why you chose it and be excited and be proud. Uh, if you can be excited about where you chose to go to school, the firm is going to be, think that you'll probably be more likely to be an advocate for, advocate for them out in the workforce. So I went through nine tips here. I wanna kind of close by saying there are a lot of ways that you can kind of succeed in the world. There's, there's no one path. And there are a lot of outstanding business schools. Um, I'm really proud about ours. Um, I'm, I love where I am and I will brag about where I am. Um, but there are, you know, there are a lot of wonderful business schools across the United States and across the world. Different schools are going to have different things they focus on, different things they highlight. Different schools are going to have different fields. They're going to have different things that they focus on. They're going to have different majors um, that they choose to, you know, you know, that they invest in. So think through this. Um, schooling is only one part of your journey to professional success, but it, it is an important part. But Think through the one thing above all else I'd really recommend, if, if at all possible, and I know it's not possible for everybody, but if, if possible, go take a visit to the campuses. You know, get a, get a feel for it. Go talk to the students. See what they're saying. Um, talk to a whole bunch of different people on the campus. Are you getting a consistent story? How do you feel? Does it feel like home? If you go to an institution, if you go to a university, and, and you think, and you're excited, you're, you're probably going to be successful there. So my name is Matt Rosu. As I mentioned at the beginning, uh, I'm dean of the Sigmund Weiss School of Business at Susquehanna University. I hope you enjoyed these nine tips for choosing a undergraduate business school. Uh, if you did like this video, please click like, uh, and you can subscribe. I produce uh, a reasonable amount of content, often trying to relay business and economics lessons uh, in an enjoyable and entertaining fashion. Thanks, and I look forward to seeing many of you in the next video.